Chima because that's the best front. In fact, her father was a Christian clergyman. Uh, he was also Leo Wheeler, a programmer. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, here's another transparency. This, was, uh, this came in color from Bethesda, which is one of the places that they program with. And what this is showing here, although this, this, uh, in this copy it's black and white, is that the mind of a multiple personality is different than someone who doesn't have MPD. If I was to act like a different person and they took a PT scan of my brain, it would look the same every time. But when they switch personalities, they switch alters, the brain PT scans are vastly different thus proving that their brains are not the same. They do other things to these people too, like they want to get a photographic memory. You electronically scar the brain stem and that creates um, in the child a photographic memory before you then begin dividing their personalities and you get a system of multiple personalities with photographic memories. MPD has recently been renamed DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. What are the ramifications of what they're doing? Well, there's other countries that do mind control programming beside the United States. If we look at where immigrants are coming into the United States from, we find that the former Soviet Union is second in the list, and then Red China third, and then Vietnam fifth down here are the top six countries sending us people, three of them are these communist countries that are involved in mind control. I wonder how many Spetsnaz agents have in, been infiltrated in from the Soviet Union. This is how to make the perfect spy or the perfect assassin. Remember I said we create the perfect front. Okay, let's say, say we're going to create an assassin. Where would be the perfect front for an assassin? The group that's most widely known, publicized as being a pacifist group, are the Amish. So by various means, which we won't go into, they manage to infiltrate the Amish. Remember, the Amish were required to send their boys to do alternative service during the various wars. And they did, some of them did that in mental hospitals where they do this mind control programming. And so, if we are going to uh, use this Amish farm boy as an assassin, we, uh, I'm saying we as, as if we were in the position of the people that use these slaves, these mind controlled slaves, we would uh, trigger them somehow on a subconscious level uh, for the boy to go on a trip to visit his point shop, his relatives in another state. And as he's traveling, say for instance, maybe he comes on the bus to a, a, a stop and he gets off and goes into the restroom and he's programmed to go through a series of things which just click him into his assassination uh, altar and he goes out and carries out his mission, his assassination, then he gets on the bus, goes and visits his relatives and comes back. All he knows that he's done is he's visited his relatives. There's a thing called backup amnesia. You forget that you forgot. He doesn't even realize that he's lost time. When, the, when this is all done, then the CIA, um, and they call this a wet ops, that's their term for blood's going to run, they will debrief this wet ops uh, with a team of three, a programmer and a polygraph, an expert and one other guy, and they'll bring him, the, the boy in. They will query the alters involved, find out what the truth of the matter is during this action, and then when they're satisfied that they know what's happened, they'll place the boy back into the Amish community. I sat and watched them do this mind control with many people right in front of uh, many uh, unsuspecting people. 
They say the codes, they program people and everything, and the people around them don't even know what's going on. It, once you get the programming set into a person by the time they're a teenager, then in 15 minutes in a back room, you can program them for a mission. So it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Perhaps somebody goes into a restroom, perhaps somebody gets a phone call or something like this, and you can program them very quickly to do something. You saw oh, how this operates if you've seen the Charles Bronson movie Telephon. And there they make this out in the movie Telephon to be something that the Russians have done. And there's this Russian agent, and he's going around the United States, and he calls people up on the phone, for instance, a housewife, and he says a little ditty, like a nursery rhyme, and it triggers her to go into her disassociative state, another altar that's programmed to go and get in the car and blow up a military installation and suicide herself. Now you know what's happening with all these people that are going in and shooting up things and turning the guns on themselves. These are mind-controlled people. Unfortunately, we have about two million, that's a conservative estimate, about two million Americans are under this total mind control. People, everything that you thought you knew about people is obsolete. And this is very difficult for us to grasp. But it's what the New Agers call a paradigm shift. And everything that we have been using to judge other people has been obsolete even before we were born. We go into a church and we use as a litmus test as to whether the preacher is legitimate. Is he preaching the word of God? Unless we could follow that preacher around 24 hours a day, unless we knew the hand signals and some of the other things, we could not get a handle on what that minister was all about. This programming has a very sophisticated way uh, of making people have a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde effect. And they don't even know that they're controlled. It's undetectable even to the person who's under the mind control. I have a friend who was a Christian minister. He had Collins blood and Rothschild blood in him and then he was adopted into a Russell family to hide his lineages. And horrors of horrors. Imagine being a very devout Christian, like so many of us are in this room, and he was, and then he finds out that there's a dark side to him that's totally different, that's part of the Illuminati and their horrific rituals. Some people, when they're faced with this, the Christian part of them wants to go into denial about uh, what's going on in their life. Here I am at one of the places they do a lot of programming, the Presidio. And this is real close to Presidio, Palace of Fine Arts where the Illuminati do rituals. And here we find that the Sixth Army is headquartered at the Presidio and their logo is the hexagram in a circle with the satanic uh, anarchy A in it. If you know some of the leadership of the Sixth Army, you're not surprised uh, at their logo. Quite a number of Satanists in their officer corps, including this fellow here, Michael Aquino, who's the son of Betty Ford, and he's the head of the Church of Set, and he has a number of his high priests in his Church of Set who are also part of the Sixth Army. I think about a dozen of them are high up in military intelligence with, with high security clearances. They do a lot of mind control in the temple of Set. This is another place that they do programming. This is in the United Kingdom, Tavistock Clinic. <clears throat> now, some people have wondered, why is it that I am not giving you solutions to all of this? And the reason why is, is that this is extremely sophisticated, and before you know what the problem is, I can't give you the answer. You need to know what the problem is. You need to know what's going on. And I believe that once we start seeing what's happening, then the solutions to this will start appearing.